Hey guys, today I'm going to explain some of the Brayer combinations in more detail. So I showed you the land. Now I will be making a video about how beneficial is it for a dual land versus let's say a shock land. And you might be shocked at what I have to say because it goes against what a lot of EDH players think. So um, let me just go over the combo pieces. So you do have uh, a lot of combos. You have seven, eight combos. Now the really important card is Brea. Brea is a very important card in this combo piece, but you have access to her always as I move the combo pieces. So the number one combo that you're trying to go for is uh, the Gorger Dragon and the one of these. So you need him in the graveyard and the fastest way to get him in the graveyard is in Tomb, which is actually one of, I consider in Tomb essentially a tutor in this deck. Let me go find in Tomb. Uh, yes, in Tomb. So you do have a lot of fast mana. You can go in Tomb, and Tomb is going to find the Gorger Dragon, put it in the graveyard, and then you can animate or dance de dead. And there, the combo goes like this. When you enchant the dragon from your graveyard, it comes into play. And when it comes into play, remove all other permanents you control from the game, which includes this enchantment. Whenever it leaves play, return the remove cards from play under their owner's control. So let's imagine this is the graveyard. We animate dead it. It's going to come into play. Then it's going to remove the animate dead, right? And then it's going to die because animate dead kills it. And then the animate dead will come back. And then we'll target it again from the graveyard. So it basically goes off pretty smoothly most times. There is graveyard hate, of course. And there is, I mean, your opponent can always counter, right? Counter typically. The issue I have is it becomes a counter spell battle, not really for the Entomb because they're well, they they can concede the Entomb. The dragons go in the graveyard. You have many ways to put it in the graveyard or draw it, discard it. It's going to be a, a battle over the animate dead and dance of the dead. Now you might ask, okay, well, so what? So I have lots and lots of mana. Okay, or well, first of all, when you have land, when things come back into play. They come back and play untapped. That's really important to remember because if you have land or, you know, artifacts, when the permanents come in play, you can retap them for mana. And that's really important because let's say we had, I'm going to pick the dual lands for a bit. Uh, that's why I think the dual lands are very, very good for this deck because you need the combination but you're generating infinite mana, so I'll let me grab some dual land. So if I have a scrub land, the land that I need is a bad land? No, I need a blue and a red. I need volcanic. Okay, so if I had these two land in play, and then Brayer's casting cost, and I had the ward, the dragon, and the dragon's coming back and forth, back and forth. I can tap this for mana. And the reason I need one of each, and that's why your fetch lands are so important, plus having a set of them, is because I need Brea. I need to put Brea out. So I have infinite mana, but I need the, the four colors to put Brea out. If you don't know how Brea works, he has a second ability that says sacrifice two artifacts. So she comes into play with two 1-1 one, one tokens. Sacrifice two artifacts, choose one, it deals free damage to target player, and that's the one you're gonna choose. Target creature gets minus four, minus four, or you gain five life. So you're gonna do the damage. And then you will sacrifice her in an artifact, and then it will loop, because then she'll go back to your command zone, but remember you have infinite colored mana. If these are your two lands, or if you have these two lands, or some combination, you need all four colors in it. Now, of course, you could have a Chrome Mox. Um, there are other things that would be very helpful that can tap for mana, like a Mox Opal, a Lotus, no, not Lotus Petal, because that dies. Uh, a Command Spear, a Mox Diamond, for instance, would be pretty helpful. And that's how the combo works. So these are, this is the 
first combo that you're going for because it's so fast. It's just blazing fast. Now, the second combo that you want to go for, which is very good, so let me put this away. And Tomb, I mean, I guess it is a combo piece, but it's kind of like extra. The dragons go in the graveyard anyway. Uh, the next big combo piece is these two. And because this is your commander in Lion's Eye Diamond, so as long as you have this on the field or this in the graveyard, I mean, Entomb again is a very good utility card and I can go over any utility card. So Entomb can put my diamond in the graveyard, which is not bad place to hide it. Graveyard removal. So these two combos are the most powerful combos because they're the fastest and most consistent. However, they have a weakness that some of the other combos don't have, which is graveyard removal. And so if they hit your graveyard, you're kind of screwed. Um, for these two combos, that's why I have seven other, or uh, six other combos available. So here you, you put, play this card, one in a white, return target artifact card where converted mana costs one or less from your graveyard to your hand, obviously Lion's Eye Diamond, and you continue this forever, you're gonna net one colored mana. So in the beginning, you're gonna use this for white, so you can activate it, but then you're left with an infinite amount of white mana, then you don't need white mana anymore. So it's basically, you can get the other colors, blue, black, and red, and then you continue to sacrifice. So Brea is a very good piece because you can win the game with just Brea. Uh, she is the sack outlet because she kills herself and they fop their token and then she comes back and play again and you can deal damage. And as long as you have infinite colored mana because you have to continue recast, recast, recast and it costs at least a white, a blue, a black and a red to recast, you can just play Brayer infinite amount of times and sacrifice. So that's a pretty cool combo. Now, the two combos I just showed you were pretty good, but, and they're the number one in two combos, but what if your opponent hits your graveyard? That kind of sucks, right? So another win combo is, it doesn't actually include Brea, is Jace, Laboratory Maniac, uh, which is the same thing. J this Jace says that if you would draw a card and you cannot draw a card from your library, you win the game instead. Uh, same with Laboratory Maniac. Uh, the reason that I have them both is redundancy, of course. And now you have Tainted Pack, Demonic Constitution. So I did run Ad Nauseum and Phyrexian on Life, but that seemed like a little extra, right? Because these two, Tainted Pack, uh, Demonic Constitution, you're going to go ahead and basically pick a card that you don't actually want, and then you deck yourself and you win the game. So I like that because it's instant speed. Same with Tainted Pack. Tainted Pack is really interesting because I don't think it was ever designed to be this way, right? Uh, to mill yourself out. But Demonic Consultation, Tainted Pack, they're really interesting instant speed, but you are showing the card. Normally, I mean, you could play them in the same turn because they're very cheap. Again, they're going to counterspell them. So I like to stack up. Uh, they're going to go after the Maniac. In my opinion, many people don't actually know what Jace reads because this Jace isn't very normal. And they probably just think it's a mind scope to Jace. So you can get away with the Jace. I found out that the Maniac comes down, yeah, everyone's on you. All right, uh, this combination I like because it's end of turn, Pestermite, next turn, Splinter Twin, and it's one of those things that it should draw out your opponent. Now, Twin is also interesting because Twin with Brea is not bad itself. Uh, should you be in that situation, Brea makes a lot of tokens, right? And then Twin would copy the Brea. You could sacrifice the tokens uh, to gain, gain life. There are situations where you can put Twin on other stuff, but for the most part, uh, this is a enclosed combination. What I don't like about this combination is it's, I mean, this is probably the most easy to counter combination because you have a very frail creature and you have an enchantment that costs four. So not the strongest. All right, next, um, Pillapala and Grand Architect. 
I love this combo. So you make the Pelopala blue, and whenever top and on top blue creature you control, add two to the mana pool. Sac um, use this mana only for artifact spells or abilities, which Pelopala is. I need to get a foil one of these. Uh, I have not I've come across a foil, but essentially you make it blue, it can tap for two, it untaps for two, generates one colorless mana. As I mentioned with Brea, infinite color, color sorry, could not. It generates one colored mana of your choice. Infinite colored mana means boom, you just win. Oh, okay, also Pestamite, like how would we win? I forgot, how would we win with Pestamite uh, very easily? We have Alter for infinite colored mana. We have this for you know regular generic mana. We have um, Alter the Brood. Uh, and then that's how we would win, or we could go, um, yeah, that's how we would win. Alter the Brood is probably the simplest way to deck everyone. So not only can we deck ourselves win, we can deck our opponents. So the uh, ability to do stuff in this deck is really fun. All right, now we get to this combo. So essentially, you put the power artifact on a monolith, vault, or a, another monolith, and now you can generate infinite generic mana, which again is really good because you can just blast someone with, um, well, these are your two mana sinks. You can either draw out your whole deck, gain infinite life, and just do crazy stuff, or you can just walk in ballista them all your opponents because you have infinite generic mana which is good and lastly but not leastly you have the two artifacts a lot of this is like differently tutable like this is a very fun combo too one um so this is going to come back from the graveyard every time you sacrifice it and then you can generate infinite amount of one one tokens gain infinite life and honestly, then you can take the tokens to do whatever you want. You can throw it to a sack outlet again, creating infinite generic mana. You can, in this case, you can alter the brood because you're getting infinite creatures. You can alter for generic mana. You can go Brea and you can even use the Ironworks, right? Or you can, yeah, you could use the Ironworks to go infinite generic mana and then either Ballista or this. So that is Brayer in a nutshell. Now I'll probably make another video explaining uh, generally what are the best tutors for Brayer. Hi guys.